I can say. So first talk by Patrick Brosnan. His title is very long. <laughs> <laughs> Why Marx Man Theorem Saved Dutch Conjecture in the parentheses for wild type abelian fourfolds for what savage tropical example, country example. Well, thank, I want to thank Hussein for you know, inviting me to this beautiful place, which where I've never been, and um, it's, been, it's been really fun. Um, oh, yeah, and I, I guess I think what I'll do is I'll, there's this talk comes with this story. I mean, it's really, st I don't really have, I have to maybe say I'm sorry that I don't really have a lot of deep things to say or really anything deep to say. In a way, it's kind of trivial what I'm going to tell you, but there's like an interesting story. I mean, my what I've done is trivial. What other people have done is totally not trivial. But um, so maybe I tell you the theorems that the the theorems the talk is about, and then I tell you the story. Um, so the main and can you read this? Like the you could read the word theorem. Okay, so I have nobody objects. So the main. Theorem the talk is about is a theorem of Markman. And actually, what I'll mainly do is just explain that theorem. Actually, it really, honestly, what I'm going to do in the talk is just not explain the proof of the theorem, but actually the actual theorem. Um, so his theorem says that the Hodge conjecture uh, is true uh, for uh, Ve type cycles on uh, abelian fourfolds uh, of discriminant one. Okay, I mean, so the, really the main issue about the talk is the discriminant one part. Uh, so I kind of have to explain what that means. But then also what a VE type cycle is and what on the VE type, it's really on, a, on VE type, I should maybe say on VE type abelian fourfolds, VE abelian fourfolds of discriminant one. So I have to say what a VE type cycle is and I have to say what a VE, abelian fourfold is. And, but the main important thing for me is actually discriminant one. Uh, okay, I mean, the, the, okay, and then there is like a, a I, I don't know what to call this. It's like an idea or a research plan which is due to Konsevich. And that, I heard about it in a, a talk of Konsevich. There was a, a conference for Katsarkov's and Pantev's 60th birthday. In that talk, uh, which is kind of cool to see, actually, uh, Konsevich actually tells the story that he met Hossein and he found that they were like brothers and not believing the Hodge conjecture. <laughs> Or skepticality. Is that, is that a good way to, I hope I, I want to describe it the right way, <laughs> accurately. And so they, they and, and, uh, and you, Konsevich had this plan for quite a while, actually. I'd heard about it through rumors about how to disprove the Hodge conjecture. Uh, so this, the idea is due to, Kon, the research plan is due to Konsevich, and then it's written about where you can see something written is on the archive in a paper of Zharkov, uh, of Ilya Zharkov. Um, and the research, let me just say it like this. I'll say more. So that you want to look for counterexamples uh, to Hodge conjecture. Um, uh, for Ve type uh, abelian varieties uh, 
by, okay, I'm going to say it like this, by studying their maximal uh, unipotent degenerations via tropical geometry. So um, basically, uh, I mean, I, I'll say a little bit more about this. I won't say it like a lot, a lot about it because there's a there, there's a lot I don't understand about this. But the idea is to uh, kind of reduce the Hodge conjecture to a thing that they make a, to a tropical Hodge conjecture, and hope that that tropical Hodge conjecture is more amenable, it's more, maybe more discrete, more like combinatorial. And if you could disprove that tropical Hodge conjecture, then the claim is that it would disprove the actual Hodge conjecture. So well, like I heard this talk at that conference, and then Helga Rudat, which is, this, is, this talk is really part of work in progress that will be with Helga Rudat. So Helga uh, and I started talking about it. And um, which is, didn't under, I mean, like the whole rest of the conference, <laughs> we were talking about it. And then we started reading Ilya's paper, um, which is interesting because Ilya's paper is about uh, Ve type abelian fourfolds, and it kind of pursues this idea, but uh, it doesn't, it's like inconclusive. It doesn't disprove the Hodge conjecture in, for Ve type abelian fourfolds. <laughs> Uh, so, so, I mean, there's an analogy that somebody, uh, because somebody at the conference brought this up, I thought about it. Like, somebody at the conference said, like, I won't name them. They were from Russia. They said that they trust Americans more than Russians. And I was like, why? <laughs> and they said, because, like, when Americans invaded Iraq, it's probably bad to joke about this. I'm really sorry for anybody who said, I'm very apolitical. I, this is just, uh, this fine, it's funny. Like, when Americans invaded Iraq, they didn't find weapons of mass, mass destruction. Uh, but he said, the guy said the Russians would have found weapons of mass destruction. This is probably, this is going on tape, right? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Zharkov, they didn't find a counterexample of the Hodge conjecture. So uh, I trust them, right? Uh, okay, so here is my uh, observation. <laughs> it wasn't Zharkov. Was I'm not naming the person that said that. that, that, said that. Oh, that. It was probably a bad idea uh, to bring up. It's, yeah. Okay, here's the observation. Um, and it's just like the main, my, the main thing of the, Uh, okay, so the uh, the only uh, sort of V type uh, families of abelian fourfolds uh, admitting maximal unipotent degenerations degenerations are those with discriminant one So con consequently, uh, Conservative's method can't disprove the Hodge conjecture for very type abelian fourfolds. So the HC 
for uh, uh, wave type cycles on whatever, abelian, wave abelian four folds. And just, just in case, I mean, I, this is, I'm going like to belabor this just because I want to make it, I've given this talk before, when I, uh, I want to make sure it's like, I, this part is like absolutely clear. Um, I mean, uh, Markman proved the Hodge conjecture for the discriminant one people, discriminant one Vey type fourfold. So, and, but on the other hand, Konsevich, he needs some maximal unipotent degeneration and the ones that have discriminant not equal to one, they just don't have maximal unipotent degeneration. So there's no way the thing can work uh, in dimension four. So dimension six, so maybe, maybe this time, maybe actually let me ask if there are any questions before I go on, because I want to philosophize a slight bit. Okay, so are there are no que uh, questions. Uh, like maybe the first bit of philosophy is like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's going to be like the bulk of the talk, in fact. Uh, that, uh, that, so yeah, so in fact, this talk, the observation is basically an excuse to remind you and to remind myself what those things mean. <laughs> um, okay, maybe uh, uh, some, so well, yeah, the first bit of philosophy is like the, the thing itself maybe remarks. Uh, so one is like for for bay type six folds, like it's still uh, we could still work. Uh, well, maybe, maybe we remark zero is that the the Hodge conjecture just because Konsevich's method can't disprove the Hodge conjecture for the bay type cycles of discriminant one doesn't mean that it's true. So uh, the HC could still be false. I mean, these are maybe false for bay uh, type cycles. On abelian fourfolds, or or, and and one is that Konsevich's method Konsevich could still disprove uh, the HC for six folds. with his methods. Because Markman hasn't disproved the Hodge conjecture. Uh, hasn't proved the Hodge conjecture in that case. Um, two, uh, uh, Mar uh, maybe Markman's theorem is really deep. The proof of Markman's theorem is really deep. Uh, and, uh, um, Uh, theorem has a really deep proof. I mean, it relies on a lot of things, but maybe since I'm here, I mean, I say that probably one of the main uh, tools is uh, this. Um, there are like several theorems of Verbitsky that go into it, and one is his, uh, uh, his kind of notion of hyperholomorphic sheaves. And uh, it, it's a way to produce. Um, sheaves that just extend over the whole moduli space of, or whole period domain, whole moduli space of hyperkähler manifolds. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Markman uses uh, these certain hyperkähler manifolds to prove, they come up in the proof. I mean, they're an essential part of the proof. Uh, so maybe involving uh, deep things like uh, Verbitsky's uh, hyperholomorphic sheaves. I think they're called hyperholomorphic sheaves. The, um, and it's like I want to, well, maybe I'll try, if I run out of time in the talk, maybe I try to explain what I know about the proof, but it's, uh, 
I mean, I, I don't, I couldn't, if I had to take an exam on the whole proof, I wouldn't be able to pass it. <laughs> but uh, it, it's extremely interesting. I mean, I, I, I think what I, I'm not an expert on the Hodge conjecture, even, you know, I'm here, I'm glad to be invited to this conference, but I'm not an expert on the Hodge conjecture. But what I would always thought is that most people are proving the Hodge conjecture by just finding the cycles. And Markman really, really isn't doing that because he's using, he does find the cycle somewhere, but they're not on the varieties that he's using. And then he winds up using this notion of hyperholomorphic sheaves to deform them through varieties that are completely not algebraic varieties. I mean, they're just some kind of Kähler manifolds, uh, often with Picard group zero. So the, it's, it's an extremely analytic thing that goes into it. Um, okay, now I tell you, I start telling you what, um, see if there's anything else. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, well, I, I want to say like a little bit about Konsevich's research plan. Um, maybe one, it's a tiny bit more about Konsevich's plan. Uh, no, maybe I'll tell you what the cycles are first. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay. so um, yeah, first let me just fix some notation on, the, uh, on uh, Hodge classes. So let's take X, uh, like a smooth projective variety. This is just going to be notation. X, smooth projective variety. Uh, let's like let uh, I'll just write Hodge k of x. That's just going to be you know h two k of x. Let's do it with rational coefficients. Intersect h k k. And then let's let uh, like alg k of x equal to the uh, the, the algebraic cycles. So, so the uh, the image. Of zk of x and h2k of x cube, where this is the algebraic cycles, uh, but with coefficients in q. Of uh, co-dimension k. So we'll do like that. And then this is contained in here. And the Hans conjecture is to show that they're equal. Um, now, uh, they're both, they're both, um, they're both rings. So, um, uh, so, uh, so, and this this guy is a subring of this. So, uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, so it turns out, like, if X is a general abelian variety, um, the Hodge uh, the Hodge ring is generated by things in Hodge one, and Hodge one is equal to Alge one by left sets. So, uh, for the general abelian variety. The Hodge conjecture is just true. So maybe I'll write that down. For the general abelian variety, HC is true because, uh, well, really because the Hodge group and the, and the group of algebraic cycles is always just like Q because uh, Al's K of x equals Hodge k of x is equal to q for all, uh, you know, 0 less than or equal to k less than or equal to dim x. Yeah, I guess very, very yeah, very, yeah. Uh, uh, so for all 0 less than or equal to dim, uh, dim x in uh, uh, 
Uh, okay, so then they decided, uh, no, really what happened is that like Mumford decided to write down examples of abelian varieties where the Hodge conjecture might not be true. And what you need to do is write down examples of abelian varieties where the Hodge ring is not generated by Hodge 1. Okay? And he wrote down some examples, and then they looked at it and noticed that like, the examples were like, maybe more complicated than they kind of needed to be. So he generalized it. He generalized like Mumford's thing and made it kind of simpler. And what he, uh, I mean, what he realized is that what was really going on is just that, uh, well, you had um, the, the endomorphisms of the abelian variety uh, contained a copy of uh, an order in an imaginary quadratic field. And that, and one technical thing, which other technical thing, which I'll, I'll say. So let's, let's say, let's write uh, and, let's just write and, I guess and q and x is going to be the ring ring of endomorphisms. of an abelian variety X. And then it's like N Q of X is, is just like N X tensor Q. Okay, let's just call, uh, and, let's, so, and let's like actually let's fix K, an imaginary quadratic field. And we might as well say k is q adjoined square root of minus d. Okay. Um, and let, let's uh, let's call like x and k a pair. If or maybe yeah, just call it, let's just call it a pair. If k is contained in the endomorphism group of x. I'm going to call it a vapor. This is a totally non-standard. Uh, if k is contained in and q of x, so you have like some containment. I mean, just some map. We fix the map. So a pair is like a, a going to be an abelian variety with uh, uh, inclusion of k into and and q of x. Okay. Now then, there's this. Um, they need an, an extra condition to get these like extra cool cycles. And um, here's the definition. Maybe I should say that everything, a lot of the things I say here, I steal from Van, uh, Van Kiemen's art, uh, article, which is a really nice article. Uh, so maybe I should say, let's see. Okay, uh, you, you can look it up. If you like type in Van Kiemen to um, the internet, you'll find the paper I'm talking about. Um, okay, so we say, so XK is VA type abelian variety. Um, if, uh, Square root of minus d acts on um, the Lie algebra of x. Okay, because the x is a group, uh, it's a abelian variety, so it's a group. So square root of, and square root of minus d, k acts on x, so square root of minus d acts on x, and then it would act on the Lie algebra with uh, n eigenvalues. Um, square root of minus d. And n eigenvalues uh, minus square root minus d. Okay. So Vey's observation is that on these guys, you get like extra cycles uh, that you can you you get extra Hodge classes. I mean, but actually, but his observation is on these guys, you get extra Hodge classes, but it's not obvious that you get extra cycles. Uh, 
Yeah. What? Yeah. No, I think they were like, they had much bigger endomorphism rings. I think so, yeah. But I could be wrong. I mean, I, you know what? I could be wrong about you, you Maybe I, mean, I would say we should talk about it afterwards. And we could talk about it afterwards, and you're, you're probably going to wind up being right. <laughs> Fine. I mean, I get it from, I, where did I learn this from? Because I didn't, I learned it from, I, 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 I learned it from Van Giemen's paper, uh, but then also, like, I did look at uh, Vey's paper. Vey's paper is kind of very different from what Van Giemen says, but kind of very, uh, very nice. But it's very explicit. Um, um, so I didn't really look at what Mumford did, and that's why I'm saying that you, you, I'm, I'm going to... I would actually bet on you being right. Um, okay, so uh, I want to tell you how uh, what what these extra cycles are, and uh, now I'm, I'm not. I'm going to kind of a little bit tell you, but not completely, because either I'd have to do what they did and write down things very explicitly, or I'd have to prove something that I don't want to prove. Um, Okay, so we have uh, okay. We have the following thing. So H I. So let's really fix. Let's fix X K to be a V type abelian variety. Okay. And then it turns out that because of the, I think it's actually just because of this condition, maybe pretty direct from this condition, that uh, the dimension of X is always even. So I'm going to note uh, dimension of X is even. Just point that out. Um, okay, okay, and uh, then uh, K, it acts on H. Well, it acts on all of the H i of x, but it acts on H one of x k of x q, and it makes it into a, a module, making it into a k vector space. Okay, uh, it doesn't make all the H i's into a k vector space because, like, if you think about it, it couldn't make H zero into a k vector space because H zero is Q. But it makes H one into a k vector space basically because of the way it acts because H one is like the dual of the H one is related to the Lie the, to to H one is H one zero and H zero one plus H zero one and it's because it acts makes this into a vector space. Okay, so. Um, so you can play this like game with uh, uh, linear algebra. So you, you have H i of x q, which is equal to wedge i of H one of x q. And then you can do this kind of bizarre thing. You can map that. I mean, it's not that bizarre. Instead of taking the wedge product over uh, Q, you could take the wedge product over K, and that would map to here. To, so, it would subject onto that. So here's where where the where the wedge, where the exterior product with the K subscript K is taken over K. Denotes uh, exterior product uh, as a K module, as a K vector space. And then there's like basically a, like a proposition of A. 
But actually, Vey proves this proposition by explicitly writing everything down. Uh, uh, and uh, Van Kamen proves it in a like, more analytic way somehow. Um, okay, for n, for n, let's make n, I think we're going to make n, we're going to have to get n. I didn't. I have to get one thing straight. So n, I chose n here, but I didn't tell you what it was. Right? So n eigenvalues square root of minus t and n eigenvalues minus square root of minus t on Lee x. So that means Lee x has to have dimension 2n. So that means x is dimension 2n. So take x. Okay, so Faye's proposition is that for n bigger than zero, um, wedge, um, wedge um, two n of h over k of h one of x cubed is naturally a direct sum n of um, h two n of x q. Uh, moreover, uh, Moreover, it's contained in the Hodge, so wedge 2n k h1 of xq is contained in Hodge n of x. Okay, and maybe one just, uh, I think, somewhat, it's like working through the dimensions of things is sort of annoying, but I mean, th this, um, this is the middle dimension. Maybe I point that out. And also because, okay, the Lee, uh, we, we took wedge 2n of h1 of xq, and if I did this right, uh, that thing, uh, yeah, but uh, this is, yeah, okay. h1 of xq has dimension 4n because the abelian variety has dimension 2n, but then we view it as a k vector space. So that means it has dimension 2n as a k vector space. And we took that 2 nth exterior product, which is a determinant, so that this is just isomorphic to k. Okay, so we get like a, 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 a sub, uh, we get 2, basically k is dimension 2 over q. <laughs> so we get a dimension 2 space of cycles in here, I call them cycles, even though they're not, I don't know, a cohomology class is in here. Um, and we don't know whether or not they're, uh, they're algebraic. So we get a two-dimensional two, two dimensional space of Hodge classes. Okay. So uh, any questions about that that you think I could answer? <laughs> Uh, like I said, Vey's paper, he, what he does, Vey's paper, the polarization takes uh, place, is used much earlier. And what he basically does is like he diagonal, he takes a polarization, he like diagonalizes it, and writes it into like some kind of, you know, just, uh, he, uh, he writes it in terms of some forms really. And then he kind of wedges all those forms together. I don't, that's not a very good explanation, but he basically explicitly writes down a wedge of forms that he cooks up out of that polarization that give you elements of, not of this, but of this tensored with C, essentially. And then he like uh, finds out how to write things in here. I mean, that's maybe not the greatest. Okay, so let's call, definition. Let's call uh, the elements of this uh, elements of wedge to nk 
H1, Xq, the Vay type cycles. Or maybe we can Vay leave out such type. Now I was going to introduce another symbol for it, but like, let's just call it that. But so those are the when, I, when so when I say that Markman proved the Hodge conjecture for Vay type cycles and abelian fourfolds of discriminant one, what he proved is that those guys are algebraic. And maybe there's one thing that like this is kind of Vay knew this it goes back forever. Like if you prove it for one of the cycles in there, not the non-zero cycles in there. Then you proved it for all because there's like a, the action of K, it, it does act on this thing non trivially, and you can, if you, and it's preserved, it's like an algebraic action. So if you prove it for one, you can use K to move it around and prove it for something that's linearly independent from that thing, so you prove it for everything. Okay. So maybe I'll make this, I mean, I don't really make, need to write that down because it's not that important. But, um, I mean, it's important for Markman, I think. But uh, since I'm not proving that, it's not important. Uh, the other thing that maybe is slightly conceptually is important is that I believe this is theorem of Monin, but I could be wrong. It's going on tape, so maybe I should be right about this. But if you, if, for abelian fourfolds, if you uh, prove the Hodge conjecture for Vay type cycles on Vay type things, then you've actually proved it for all simple abelian fourfolds. I think that's true. Uh, so, so okay. So now the discriminant one. Uh, now I have to talk about polarizations and their Hermitian forms. So I have to explain. Uh, The next thing is to talk about polarizations, emission forms, and what does discriminant one mean? I don't know, but I think maybe I should, I want, I should have said this uh, possibly before. I mean, I worry about giving this talk because I really do say what I'm saying is very trivial. <laughs> and uh, there is an interpretation. So the proper way to think about this, which makes definitely what I'm saying trivial, uh, is to think about it in terms of Shimura varieties. And um, OK, so if you think about it in terms of Shimura varieties, the so Bay type abelian varieties, are parameterized by Shimura varieties of type uh, G-U-N-N. Uh, so maybe this is a rem remark for experts, which that, unfortunately, that thing doesn't really include me. But, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> so uh, they type, type abelian varieties are parameterized by, but see, it did kind of include they. They didn't write it in terms of the language of uh, Shimura varieties, at least starting at the beginning. And he never said Shimura variety. But he knew about that stuff. And actually, towards the end, it becomes much more clear that he thinks about it that way. So uh, they're parameterized by uh, Shimura varieties. of uh, type, uh, it's like a GU, I think G-U-N-N, -N, or maybe P, either G-U-N-N -N or P-S-U-N-N, -N, I don't know. But do you, you know what I mean? Like you take the unitary group of type N-N, -N, right? So, uh, so then, so that means that you know what the Mumford, oh, he also didn't say the words Mumford-Tate. So you, you know what the Mumford-Tate group is. It's G-U-N-N, -N, right? And then, uh, we, so then if you want to find out what Hodge classes there are on that, you just tensor this with like C, right? And then, then it becomes, uh, I guess, G, L, N, N, or G, L, G, L. The thing is, you wind up looking at invariant, you wind up working, looking at invariants of 
SL2N. I believe that's right. So, and then by this condition, what you're saying is that the Lie algebra breaks up uh, is, is a, or just not the Lie algebra, you're saying that H1 is a direct sum of a representation of SL2N and it's dual. Okay? So then the whole exterior algebra is uh, the exterior algebra of that, right? <laughs> and then it's kind of clear where the, these things are because you see you wind up having, uh, uh, you wind up looking at wedge. It's kind of clear what's going, on, what's going on for that. So Hodge, I might write this down wrong. Hodge I of x is going to be v plus v dual wedge, I, wedge 2i. But then you take the invariance under SL2n. And uh, so where v, I think v and v dual are both like two n-dimensional uh, representations. And you see in, in uh, when i equals n, you get the determinant plus the determinant. <laughs> And when i is like less than it, you just keep getting things like that come from v and v dual, pairing them together. So from this it's clear, the, so the Hodge, the Vey type cycles uh, come from uh, like just wedge 2n of v, like the determinant, it's sitting in wedge 2n of v and wedge 2n of v dual. Does that, first of all, do you think that's right, what I just said? <laughs> and also, does it answer your question? <laughs> I believe, yeah, I think, believe it's right. I could, I think you have to be careful about the dimensions of things to make sure that it's not wrong. But if you look at Ve, even if you look in Van Geeman's paper, he says this. Okay, and then maybe to, I don't, I want to, I mean, I want, I just want you guys to kind of listen to my talk, but I will tell you, like, why my talk is trivial from this perspective. And also why I knew that it's like when I, the, what happened is I was reading uh, Jacques' paper with Helga, and then I realized in the first line that uh, there's not, this isn't going to work if the discriminant is not one, right? And why I realized that is just that, like, <clears throat> I didn't know what the discriminant really was, but I knew it was an invariant of this group, right? And this group is defined over Q. And I kind of knew what, when the discriminant is trivial, that group is going to be like as trivial as it can be, right? Which would be like a, a quasi-split group. And the quasi-split group would have a zero-dimensional uh, boundary component in the Shimura variety. And then the ones that were not quasi-split would not have a zero-dimensional boundary component. And so what really I'm just saying is that if the group had, if you, to get maximal, you need a potent degeneration, the Shimura variety has to have, the, okay, the Hermitian symmetric space has to have a zero dimensional rational boundary component. And if it doesn't have a zero dimensional round boundary, if it, yeah, then discriminant controls that. I'm not gonna say that in this language here because I don't understand it myself. But, but, uh, but that's what's behind it. <laughs> like, is, uh, yeah, does that, I hope that answers your question. And, and then was also amusing. Uh, okay, so. Uh, okay, but, but at the same time, if you didn't understand it, then I'm with you and also this talk you're going to like it. Uh, okay, so, um, uh, uh, okay, so we will, like, uh, uh, so let's set V, let's set V, which I've already done, equal to, well, no, I didn't do, actually, I didn't do it. This is going to be different V. V is going to be H1 of XQ. Okay. Um, and then, um, so a polarization uh, so it's like omega on x uh, uh, it gives rise to uh, a skew symmetric form uh, 
omega uh, from times v times v to q. I mean, it's an element in, like, omega is an element in wedge 2. So, so maybe I'll just, so, in other words, uh, i.e., suppose, like, omega is C1L for L uh, line bundle. And it's, well, it's sitting in like H2 of XQ, and that's equal to wedge 2 of H1 of XQ, which is just wedge 2 of V star. Okay, and then if L is, uh, I guess what I want to say if, is if L is uh, ample, then this thing will be like an, a non degenerate, it'll be a symplectic form. And now I want to play some game. There's a game that they played with like linear algebra that uh, produces a Hermitian form. Okay, I mean, maybe before I play this game, let me ask, like how, do I go to like 950 or do I go to 10? Oh, 55, okay, yeah. No, okay, uh, it's because, um, um, 955? Okay, then I go to 955. I do that, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, it's, just like, it's just a matter of how to break this up. Uh, um, okay, let's do the definition. Uh, so we say, uh, we say uh, omega in like Hodge 1 of x is V type. Uh, uh, polarization. Let, let me uh, polarization. Let me add the word polarization. If uh, omega is equal to c one of L for L ample on X, and this weird thing holds. And um, so square root of minus d, lower star of omega. Because remember, uh, oh no, upper star of omega. Because remember, omega is in H2, is equal to, I want to get the number right. I want to get the sign right. Is equal to d times omega. OK. That's it. Um, Okay, maybe I'll make a remark. Um, um, so square root of minus d acting on uh, h2 of x cubed, it has eigenvalues like d and minus d. <laughs> so there's always some, uh, and, and using that fact, you can see that there's always some uh, uh, beta type polarization. So using this, you can uh, see that uh, they type the they type abelian varieties always have uh, they type polarization. And anyway, it's a, I mean, it's like a, well, Van Gaiman proves it, but the, also it's in Bayes. I mean, Bayes also proves it kind of a different way. Uh, I mean, because he starts with the polarization. Um, okay, so now, um, now then there's, Now, um, 
No, look, uh, let me give the proposition. I, I don't think I need to. I was going to say some more notation, but let me give you the proposition, which, and then this will be the last thing I'll say. Um, so suppose um, XK with W is of A type uh, Velen variety with of A type polarization. Okay. Um, we set um, uh, H of X, Y equal to this weird thing. So omega of X times square root of minus D lower star of Y plus square root of minus D times omega of X. Then uh, H from V times V to K um, is not a generate Hermitian form. Okay, and then maybe make a go a remark. Okay, maybe for, Maybe first remark, which like tells you about the rest of my talk. Actually, the rest of my talk is not about abelian varieties. It's just really about Hermitian forms. Okay, and the, because of this, because this thing, we want to know what the descript the discriminant is. The discriminant of this Hermitian form, and the whole thing, uh, the, my whole observation is that if the discriminant is not equal to one, then you don't have maximal unipotent monodromy, and it really winds up just being something about this Hermitian form. So, uh, so the other thing is, I just want you to like read it properly. I mean, the, here x and y are in v, right, which is h lower one, square root of minus d x and v. So here we get an element of q, but then we multiply it by square root of minus d, this one. So we get an element of k. And then also, what does Hermitian mean? Some people say that it should be linear in the first variable. Some people say that it should be linear in the second variable, and uh, for this, it means linear in the second variable. Yeah, linear in the second variable. I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> Let me just go back and check. Uh, and I think I'm out of time, so like I, I stop for this time.